Hello, my name is Kweku. I am a pharmacist. In today's video, I'll be talking about the benefits of vitamin K2. I will explain why this less known vitamin is so important and also discuss ways to increase your intake of vitamin K2. I will also provide some dosing, general dosing guidelines. And so whether you choose to get it from a dietary source or you decide to take supplements, I'll definitely have some information for you. Now, before discussing vitamin K2, let's first understand what vitamin K is. Vitamin K is a fat soluble vitamin that plays a vital role in blood clotting, in bone health and heart health. However, not all forms of vitamin K are the same. In fact, vitamin K can be divided into two main types, vitamin K1, which is sometimes called phyloquinone, and vitamin K2, sometimes called menaquinone. Now, while both types of vitamin K are important for your health, vitamin K2 may have some unique benefits that vitamin K1 does not necessarily have. So let's first of all start with the benefits of vitamin K2. And the first on my list is that vitamin K2 supports heart health. One of the main functions of vitamin K2 in the body is to activate proteins that are involved in calcium metabolism. Now, calcium is a mineral that is essential for strong bones and teeth, but it can also cause problems if it accumulates in wrong places, such as in your arteries, which a process which we call arterial calcification. Vitamin K2 helps prevent arterial calcification by directing calcium to your bones and teeth where it belongs and keeping it away from your blood vessels and organs where it can cause harm by hardening and narrowing the blood vessels. In so doing, vitamin K2 reduces the risk of high blood pressure, atherosclerosis, and even stroke. Now, several studies have shown that higher intake or levels of vitamin K2 are associated with a lower risk of coronary artery disease, calcification of the arteries, and death from cardiovascular causes. One particular study looked at the relationship between vitamin K intake and the risk of developing coronary heart disease in a group of about 16,000 women who were between 49 and 70 years old when they joined the study. They were all free of heart disease at the beginning, or as there were no documented heart disease or history of heart disease. The researchers used a questionnaire to estimate how much vitamin K and other nutrients these participants ate. The researchers followed up with these women for an average of about eight years, during which time they identified or they found 480 cases of coronary heart disease. They measured the two types of vitamin K, which is K1 and K2. Now on the average, the women consumed about 211 micrograms of vitamin K1 and about 29 micrograms of vitamin K2 per day. Now when the researchers adjusted for other factors that could affect heart disease risk like age, lifestyle, and other dietary habits, they found that a higher intake of vitamin K2 was associated with a lower risk of developing coronary heart disease. Specifically, for every 10 micrograms per day increase of vitamin K2 intake, there was a 9% reduction in the risk of coronary heart disease. On the other hand, vitamin K1 intake did not show any significant effect on coronary heart risk. The researchers were thus able to conclude that eating more vitamin K2, not K1, might help reduce the risk of heart disease. I'll put a link to this particular study in the description if you want to read up a little further on it. I thought it was very interesting and eye-opening. Another benefit of vitamin K2 for your health is that it enhances your bone health. Vitamin K2 activates a protein called osteocalcin, which is involved in bone formation and bone mineralization. Now, bone mineralization is the process by which minerals such as calcium and phosphate are deposited in the matrix of the bones, leading to hardening and strengthening of the bones. Osteocalcin helps bind calcium to the bone matrix, making the bone stronger and more resistant to fractures. Now, several studies have shown that vitamin K2 supplementation can improve bone density and reduce the risk of osteoporosis and fractures, especially in postmenopausal women who are more prone to bone loss. In one study, they gave 244 postmenopausal women either 180 micrograms of vitamin K2 or a placebo daily for three years and found that those who took vitamin K2 had significantly less bone loss in their spine and hip than those who took the placebo. The third benefit is that vitamin K2 supports dental health. Now, as mentioned earlier, vitamin K2 activates osteocalcin, which is not only important for bone formation, but also for dental health. Osteocalcin helps deposit calcium and phosphorus into your teeth enamel, making them stronger and more resistant to decay. 
There have been some studies that have suggested that vitamin K2 may prevent or even reverse dental cavities by increasing the remineralization of tooth enamel. So for instance, in one study, they gave 60 adults with dental cavities either 90 micrograms of vitamin K2 or a placebo daily for just four weeks. And they found that those who took the vitamin K2 had significantly more remineralization of tooth enamel than those who took the placebo. The next benefit is anti-cancer and anti-aging effects. Now, vitamin K2 may also have some potential benefits for preventing or treating cancer and aging. Vitamin K2 has been shown to inhibit the growth and spread of various types of cancer cells, such as leukemia, lung, prostate, breast, and liver cancer. One study followed more than 11,000 men for an average of eight years and found that those who consumed the most vitamin K2 had a 63% lower risk of advanced prostate cancer than those who consumed the least. Vitamin K2 may also slow down the aging process by preventing oxidative stress and inflammation, which are major contributors to aging and chronic diseases. Vitamin K2 has been shown to activate a protein called NRF2. Now, NRF2 helps protect your cells from oxidative damage and boost your production of glutathione. Now, glutathione is a very powerful antioxidant that fights free radicals and toxins, which tend to cause damage in the body. Now, now that we know how important vitamin K2 is, let's see how we can increase or get more vitamin K2. Now, when there is insufficient evidence to establish a recommended um, dietary allowance, what we call RDA, an adequate intake is used instead. The adequate intake amount is an estimate intended to ensure that your nutrition needs are met. The National Institute of Health Office of Dietary Supplements recommends an adequate intake of vitamin K of 120 micrograms daily for men and 90 micrograms for women. However, this amount is based primarily on vitamin K1 intake and does not take into account different types and functions of vitamin K. There is no specific RDA for vitamin K2, but some literature suggests that at least 200 micrograms per day may be optimal for most people. Now, I'll touch a little bit on doses shortly. The best way to get more vitamin K2 in your, in your diet is to eat foods that are rich in this nutrient. Some of the best sources of vitamin K2 are, there's a food called natto, which is a fermented soy bean product that is popular in Japan. Uh, it contains about 1,100 micrograms of vitamin K2 per 100 grams. Then there is cheese, especially hard and aged cheese such as Gouda, Edam, and Parmesan. These contain about 50 to 80 micrograms of K2 per 100 grams. Then we have egg yolks, especially from pasta raised chickens. These contain about 15 micrograms of vitamin K2 per yolk. Butter, especially from grass-fed cows, it contains about 15 micrograms of vitamin K2 per tablespoon. Then we have beef liver, once again from grass-fed cows, contains about 12 micrograms of vitamin K2 per 100 grams. And then chicken liver, another scenario, especially from pasta-raised chickens, it contains about 14 micrograms of vitamin K2 per 100 grams. Then we have fermented vegetables, so sauerkraut, uh, kimchi, and pickles. They contain variable amounts of K2 depending on the type and duration of fermentation. Well, if none of these foods interest you, another way to get more vitamin K2 is to take supplements. Now talking about supplements, there are two main types of vitamin K2 supplements available, MK4 and MK7. MK4 is a synthetic form of vitamin K2 that has a short half-life in your body and requires relatively high doses to be effective. On the other hand, MK7 is a natural form of vitamin K2 that is derived from natto or bacterial fermentation. It has a longer half-life in your body and can be effective at lower doses. Uh, I'll have some links in the description of some of my favorite brands of vitamin K2 if you wanna check them out. Now let's talk about dosing. The optimal dose of vitamin K2 supplements depends on your your individual needs and health goals. However, here are some general guidelines. And I say general guidelines, so the idea is that you will have to double check with your doctor for your specific needs. Now for general health and prevention, about 100 to 200 micrograms per day of the MK7 or 1500 to 3000 micrograms per day of the MK4. Now for bone health, 180 to 360 micrograms per day of MK7 or 5,000 to 15,000 micrograms per day of MK4. For heart health, 90 to 180 micrograms per day of MK7, or 1,500 to 3,000 micrograms a day of MK4. And for dental health, about 90 to 180 micrograms per day. 
Now, the good thing is that vitamin K has a very low potential for toxicity. This is why there is no established tolerable upper intake level set for vitamin K. There is no known toxicity for vitamin K1 or K2 from food or supplements. But always, like I said, check with your doctor since these are general guidelines. Hope you found some value in this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. And as always, stay blessed and catch you on the next one.